Hi, I'm on my way to London to film Eggheads with my team Victoria Phoenix. How are we going to get on against a team of pro quizzers for Channel 5's flagship quiz show? And what's the experience like as a quizzer? If you've not been behind the scenes on a quiz show, watch this video and find out. So I'm masked up because at the time that we're recording this, uh, we're still in the midst of pandemic and COVID restrictions. So it'd be really interesting to see how the production team deal with COVID and at the time recording the Omicron variant. They've certainly taken a lot of care to make sure that we have done tests and that we've kept ourselves safe and we declare anything that could be a risk to the production. We already know that Barry Simmons cannot take part today. so. Who else might not be able to take part? We'll find out very soon. So here I am at Television Centre. It's changed quite a lot since I was last here. There were gates you couldn't get straight through to the main building and it was all BBC at the time so this is still a BBC production but um, fundamentally this looks like a different place. Now if you are of a certain age this fountain will only bring to mind one memory. going to do? Will we be dancing around the Roy Castle fountain tonight? Let's go in and find out. So once we were through the Covid checks we were taken through to the nice plush new green room where we did some paperwork, we had a drink and Mike obsessed about his predictions of which eggheads we would face and which subjects we would be playing. Who would you like? Lisa, mm -hmm. Chris, mm -hmm. Judith and Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, so a few of the eggheads have left the building because they've been uh -oh. running well off today. We've got Olaf today. Oh. We have got Lisa. Yeah. We've got Steve. Yeah. And we've got Chris. Oh, that's okay. Not okay, so I, got three out of, I got three out of four. <laughs> so I'm now in my show wardrobe. Here we go. Ooh, you can see me in there. And um, we found out who we're playing, which is Chris, Lisa, Steve, and Olaf. So a tough group, perhaps not the toughest, but it's now made us think about tactics and who we're going to play against who on what. So we're going to be going to studio soon, so wish us luck. How do we all feel about the team we're facing today, everybody? David? Um, I recognise one of them. <laughs> That's fantastic. Mike, how about you? Rarely to go, Barry. Barry. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> Suffice to say, we are all on our game today, all fired up and all waiting, can't wait for what lies ahead. And what lay ahead for us was studio and we weren't allowed to take any photos in there so I've recreated it. This is us. And here's Jeremy. And here are the eggheads. And now you get a bit of a perspective of us looking down the line and towards the camera which you can see with the red dot on and the screens that will have the questions and options on. This is uh, Jeremy's view, looking back towards the eggheads. And this is the eggheads view, again they have a screen as well looking towards Jeremy and us. And the room where the head to heads take place is the other side of the curtain in front of that screen. So now the show, Victoria Phoenix versus the eggheads. And a note on COVID safety, the Perspex screens you can see were moved every time there were fewer than four players on screen. First subject was art and books, David played that and he chose to play against Chris. David knew that Shakespeare said, shall I compare thee to a summer's day. Chris knew that the ugly duckling turned into a swan. David knew that T.S. Eliot's first name was Thomas, whilst Chris knew that Catching Fire was one of the Hunger Games books. David identified Peter Carey as the author of two books, which meant it was advantage us going into the final question of the round but Chris knew his Euripides from his Sophocles. Alas, David picked the wrong Spanish artist, allowing Chris to win the round. The next round was politics and no one really wanted to play it, so Mike did it. 
Andy got off to a good start, knowing that Laura Koonsberg was a BBC political editor. And Lisa managed to get the number of seats won by the Tories at the last election. Mike managed to get Nobel Prize winning leaders of countries, putting us 2-1 up against Lisa, who knew her shadow home secretaries to make it 2-2. Unfortunately, Mike didn't know his 19th century British Prime Ministers, and Lisa managed to guess the location of Schengen to win the round. Music should have been the round that Mike played, but unfortunately he was gone, so it was between me and Barry, and Barry got the short straw. However, he got off to a good start, recognising the first line of Do They Know It's Christmas. The questioning turned to Steve, who was asked which musical Food Glorious Food was from, but he knew it was Oliver. Unfortunately, country music was a bit of a blind spot for Barry, and he went for Garth Brooks when the answer was Tim McGraw. Steve knew that Don Giovanni was the earliest of these three operas, and Barry also knew that the entertainer was in the movie The Sting, meaning that Steve had to get his next question right to win the round. And he recognised the real name of DJ Calvin Harris, meaning that it was just me left for the final round of general knowledge. At which point, Jeremy asked me about all things quiz. You run a YouTube channel which is dedicated to quizzing. Yeah, it's called All Things Quiz. So we cover um, quizzing on TV, um, we cover sort of hints and tips on becoming better at quizzing, and we also run our own quizzes. Right, uh, what's your key tip for becoming better at quizzing? I'm all ears. Well, I always come back to something that Pat Gibson told me, which is learn the stuff that never changes. Chemical That's elements, yes. the kings and queens, etc., because they come up time and time again. If you nail those, You've got, you, you've got a bedrock of knowledge. That's a very, very good tip. Kind of you to say, Jeremy, and kind of you to give me an easy question on exercise equipment. Unfortunately, the eggheads also got an easy question on uh, what is cooked in a raclette. They got cheese. I managed to pick up that Krampus is associated with Christmas to put me 2-1 up. And the eggheads knew that Encanto was an animated movie, which had just come out, as it turns out. I knew that the Andaman and Nicobar Islands were in the Indian Ocean, putting me 3-2 up. And I had the scent of victory until Olaf identified that Ayaz Patel took 10 wickets in an innings. I knew about the company SpaceX in the first sudden death question. Unfortunately, the eggheads knew the name of Charles Dickens Illustrator, meaning we were level once more. And my next question was about the French actor and singer Maurice Chevalier, only I couldn't remember his name. I could remember it began with a C, but I couldn't get the name, and unfortunately, I got it wrong. The Eggheads almost zagged to Puerto Rico, but unfortunately for me, zigged to Jamaica, and they managed to beat us. So we lost, but it wasn't without a fight. Okay, so that didn't go as planned. David, Mike, here we are. What, what was, how was your experience? Uh, I, I, I just thought Picasso looked at Darwin in the room. Wrong categories, wrong order. Yeah. Another yeah. day, we get to take them. Yeah. Barry. Sticking me on music against Steve Cook. Well, I'm going to work well, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sacrificial lamb of the day was Barry. Um, well, second sacrificial lamb. Yeah. In fact, there was a lot of lamb today. Yeah. It was like a New Zealand farmers' convention. Yeah. Well, but it was fun. Lamb to the slaughter. Anyway. So it just remained to head home and reflect on the day's quizzing. So that was that, you know, reflecting on it, it was a really good experience. It was great to be with my teammates, it was great to be in studio again. The Eggheads team were really good, really uh, accommodating, and everything went really, really smoothly in studio. It was great to be back in that environment. In terms of not winning, I think it started going wrong with the first category, which was a good category for us. Um, David is great on literature and art and stuff like that. I think in hindsight, picking Chris to play against, the former Brain of Britain, probably the wrong move. It meant we, uh, we lost David after a little bit of a brain fart where he didn't think long enough about his answer and uh, he was kicking himself afterwards as he saw in the video. So Chris was through, David was out, the next category was politics and really none of us wanted to play it. So Mike put himself up for it, but unfortunately he lost because of uh, a question on 19th century prime ministers and the next category was music, which is what we would have wanted Mike to have played. Instead, um, Barry went for that and uh, he got knocked out on a question that if I'd have played it, I'd have got knocked out on as well. So it just left me in the final round and uh, it was all going well. Then it came to Maurice Chevalier, and I knew who he was, I could visualize him, I knew what he sung, I knew what letter his surname started with, it just wouldn't come. Now, if it was a written quiz, I would I would have had with a pen and paper, I would have been able to work my way to that. There are techniques I use that help me fish those sorts of answers out, but in studio, with a little bit of pressure on, and without a pen and a piece of paper, I just couldn't get there, and they gave me lots of time to get there. 
ultimately it just wouldn't come and that's really really annoying because it's on another day i would have fished that answer out immediately but you know it doesn't matter because at the end of the day we missed out on three thousand pounds we had a great experience it was great playing with my team great playing against the eggheads and great being on tv again now if you've enjoyed watching this video there are other videos on all things quiz that you'll enjoy so uh, just look at one of the links that we've got on screen now and uh, click through and have a look Thank you.